Harsh Mander is a civil rights activist. He joins me now from the Indian capital for more on this. Thank you for joining us on the program. Why do you think this case in particular sparked so much outrage, not just in India, but around the world and led to changes to the laws? It was, you know, I, I see it as a rare moment of, of public empathy. Uh, something happened at that moment when, uh, you know, uh, our law doesn't allow you to actually name a victim of sexual violence or her picture to be put out. So a woman who, whose name we didn't know, whose, uh, uh, whose face we didn't know, uh, somehow thousands and thousands of young people uh, across the country uh, empathized, uh, and it was not just women but also young men came out and said enough is enough and uh, and in a sense she became somebody that everybody felt was their own and, and the pain and the anguish uh, i think it was it was that rare moment of public empathy which which uh, which surfaced and led to uh, both the public outrage but also forcing uh, governments to alter laws and and uh, i I'm, i think there there's almost no example that i can think of in the world where Violence against women became such a large mass uh, movement of the kind that it did for those few weeks uh, in, in, in India. Right. Uh, and as you said, India did pass uh, new laws against sexual violence as a result of this crime. But do you think India is safer for women today than it was seven years ago? Or has nothing really changed? You know, I think that... Uh, you know, it, it's complicated. I, uh, in my opinion, a 90%. Uh, I mean, the evidence shows that 90% of rape is actually not is is by people that the, the uh, that the victim survivor knows. Uh, so, uh, so a lot of the anger is really about the uh, you know the underclass uh, potential rapist. Uh, from poor backgrounds, living in slums and shanties, uh, and 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 that really became the focus of this whole movement. But but that women are unsafe in their homes, among people they uh, they live with, they, with their families, with their friends, in their workplaces. I think that is one part of the problem. And the second is, uh, you know, this entire focus on 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 the death penalty. Uh, uh, I in, in, I I believe very much. I I'm sort of passionately against the death penalty, uh, even uh, for crimes as heinous as this. Uh, I have full respect for the parents and their anguish, uh, and, and they're asking for this, uh, for this punishment. But I believe it is not the severity of punishment, but the certainty of the punishment and the, and, and the, uh, and the surety uh, that people will be punished. Uh, and and then larger social questions of patriarchy, how, how, how boys are raised, uh, you know what uh, you know, ideas of masculinity. Uh, so I think legal and social uh, issues uh, need to be addressed much more strongly uh, to truly make uh, India a safer place for, for women and girls. Okay, and you said you are against the death penalty, but um, with these four men being executed, do you believe that justice has been served in this case? Certainly, uh, uh, under Indian law, uh, it's taken seven years, but. Uh, justice has been done according to Indian law, uh, but as I said, uh, uh, at a personal level, uh, however heinous the crime, uh, I, I, I do believe okay. that no one, no one should be executed. Okay, sorry, sorry for having to cut you off, but we are um, out of time there. We appreciate your comments, Harsh Mander, joining us from Delhi, and that is.